Good evening. I'm Spot on Weather meteorologist Matthew Euler, and welcome to the new presentation that I just put together. This is called Does Fall Predict the Winter? And this I found real interesting. You know, some people may make remarks such as certain seasons mean a colder or warmer following season. Um, so what I did is I took a look at, and I'll show you this here in a minute, I took a look at some of the fall month temperature departures across the United States and I compared them to the heart of winter, December and January winter months to see if there was any direct correlation between the fall temperature anomalies versus the subsequent winter. So for the overview, what I wanted to do in this research is to take a look at the months of October and November um, and then try to determine if the fall mean temperature anomalies, if they correlated to either a warmer or colder heart of winter, focused primarily on the months of December and January. Uh, my majority of my focus on this research is on the eastern United States. But I do include the map of the whole entire United States if you're interested in seeing how it turned out for your specific location. So the goal is to look at the fall seasons to determine if there is any kind of direct correlation with the subsequent winter seasons in the temperature departments. I look back at data involving 10 select winters dating back to 1981 and strictly looked at those fall temperature departures or anomalies and I excluded other teleconnection influences in this particular research. So I start off with 1981. Um, I've got October temperature departures in degrees Fahrenheit on the left. I have November temperature departures in degrees Fahrenheit on the right. And by the way, these temperature departures are in degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so on the left, October 1981, if you see a blue or a green shading that generally correlates with below normal temperatures, the mean or average temperature for that particular month, as compared to climatology for the period. So if we look at October 1981 on the left, look at the blue and greens across much of the United States. Um, you're looking on the order of, in the eastern U.S. specifically, you're looking on the order of 3 to 6 degrees Fahrenheit below normal in those green areas from the mid-Atlantic up into New England. There's also a cooler area there over the southwestern U.S. into Nevada and California as well in October 1981. Looking at the graphic on the right, that shows November 1981. And you notice some of the areas that were cooler than normal in October have now switched around to warmer than normal especially the Upper plain states in the Dakotas and Minnesota and Montana, parts of Wyoming in November 1981 actually ran 5 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit above normal, whereas the Mid-Atlantic, the general East Coast, uh, was slightly cooler than normal. Not quite as cold or below normal as October, but still cooler than normal. Then we look at the heart of the winter, the December and January months, following the October-November months. December 1981 on the left, January 1982 on the right. And if you look across the eastern United States in December of 1981, it was again that green coloring there, 4 to 8 degrees Fahrenheit below normal for a large chunk of Kentucky, Virginia, the Carolinas, Georgia, and the eastern Tennessee, even slightly cooler than normal, the blue coloring all the way down to Florida. Meanwhile, in December 81, you'll notice that milder, the orange shading there, above normal temperatures, basically from the Rocky Mountains to the West Coast. The graphic on the right shows a very, very frigid January of 1982, especially in the Northern Plain states, Montana, North Dakota, and Northern Minnesota, where the mean temperature in January of 1982 was running on the order of 15 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit below normal. And that type of location has already got very cold average temperatures so yes, it was very frigid in that particular location. And even January 1982, all the way down into the upper Midwest, the temperature departures were on the order of 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit below normal. To the East Coast, also below normal, on the order of 4 to 8 degrees Fahrenheit. 
and then up in New England in January 1982, the temperatures were on the order of 8 to 12, in some cases 14 degrees Fahrenheit below normal in January 1982. So if I summarize just the period of the fall, the fall months, October, November, with December 81 and January 82, I have a colder October, November, along with a colder December, January. So in general, in the eastern United States, it was below average for the mean temperatures all four months. Looking ahead to 1984, October 1984 on the left, November 1984 on the right. Now look how mild it was, much above normal it was in the eastern U.S. in October 1984, uh, where temperatures were on the order of 4 to 8 degrees Fahrenheit above normal, stretching from the mid-Atlantic, West Virginia, Virginia, down to the Carolinas, Tennessee, into Alabama and Georgia. South Carolina's in there. And then it was much cooler than normal, the green shading out in the western U.S. in October 1984. Looking at the graphic on the right, November of 84, fairly cool across below normal for a large chunk of the United States, especially the eastern U.S., on the order of 3 to 5 degrees Fahrenheit below normal. Um, in general, stretching from Maryland down through the Carolinas. And so there was a major turnaround in temperatures for the eastern U.S. between October 84 on the left and November 84 on the right. Looking at the heart of the winter months, December and January of that winter, the subsequent winter, December on the left, showing very mild temperatures um, stretching from East Texas to Arkansas up to Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, into the Carolinas and Virginia. That, that was where the uh, greatest... Uh, the warmest temperature anomalies occurred in December of 1984. So many people across the eastern U.S. in December of 84 were, were asking, where's winter? This, this feels so mild. And then for December 84 on the left, you'll notice the purple and green shading was more focused. The colder than normal temperatures were more focused across Pacific Northwest and Idaho, Montana, uh, parts of Wyoming. Even stretching down into parts of California, it was a cooler than normal month for parts of Southern California. The graphic on the right shows January of 1985, and wow, that was a cold, cold month. That purple shading there in the Midwest, right on down into the Tennessee Valley, indicative of temperatures in the order of 8 to 12 degrees Fahrenheit below normal, and then the green shading along the East Coast on the order of 4 to 8 degrees Fahrenheit below normal. So it was a major flip-flop in temperatures in the East between um, December 84 on the left and January 1985 on the right. Looking at the year 1989, the, the, the fall of 1989, October on the left and November 1989 on the right, temperature departures um, in October. Generally, it was uh, slightly below normal down in the deep south, and there was a stretch of slightly above normal air across the central U.S. to the Midwest on the order of 1 to 3 degrees Fahrenheit above normal and cooler than normal there in October 1989 on the left across California and generally across Oregon. On the right, notice this is November 1989, and suddenly things got quite chilly, quite cold in the upper Midwest in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, northern Iowa, and in general, close to average along the mid-Atlantic coast, slightly milder than normal there in the Carolinas down to Georgia and slightly cooler than normal up in New England across Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont. Looking at December 1989 on the left and January 1990 on the right, is this not a tale of two different stories? December 89 on the left, the purple shading is indicative of temperatures, mean temperatures, December 89, which is a very cold month in the east, temperatures on the order of 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit below normal. From Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York State, right on up into New England, into Massachusetts, Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire. Very cold December of 1989. And that went all the way to the mid-Atlantic coast, where places like southeastern Virginia were 12 degrees Fahrenheit below normal for the mean temperature. Graphic on the right, that's January 1990. This is just one month apart, the mean temperature anomalies. And wow, what a difference. Places that were shivering in December of 89 on the left are now basking in the warmth of an unusually mild January, especially across the Dakotas, Minnesota, Iowa, Illinois, into northeastern Missouri, 
And then even all the way to the East Coast, temperatures on the order of 4 to 8 degrees Fahrenheit above normal in January 1990. Moving ahead now to 1993 and doing this year's comparison, October on the left, November on the right. And in general, it was fairly cold in both months across a large chunk of the United States. Um, in general, uh, the only warm spot there in October 1993 on the left happened to be in the Pacific Northwest, uh, Washington State, Oregon, Idaho, even trickling down a little bit into northern and central California. But in general, across the entire United States, you'll notice Temperatures were running slightly below normal. There were a few colder pockets there in northeastern Oklahoma and northwestern Arkansas, also in parts of uh, northern New England into Maine. Graphic on the right, that's November 1993. And uh, generally um, near average across the mid-Atlantic, slightly above normal there along coastal North Carolina and South Carolina. But look at all the green shading on that graphic on the right for November of 1993. Temperatures were running four to eight degrees Fahrenheit below normal, even all the way down to Texas, um, central plain states, as well as parts of the inner mountain west. Looking at December 93 now on the left and January 94 on the right, and looking at the eastern U.S. there in December 93 on the left, it was a very cold December in 1993. Temperatures were running three to five degrees Fahrenheit below normal for the month, across the eastern seaboard and four to six degrees Fahrenheit there in the green shading across northern and central Florida. So the Floridians were shivering in December of 93. The graphic on the right shows uh, the temperature anomalies degrees Fahrenheit for January of 94. This January 94 was real interesting. I remember I was heading south from the Midwest, from northern Illinois, down into western Tennessee and I was down in western Tennessee. I got there in late December, actually, um, of 93. But I was there in January 94. And this was a really bad winter month for uh, parts of western Tennessee. I can remember uh, back to back, generally about four day apart, ice storms um, as colder air just continually flowed from the north towards the south. And uh, yeah, it got really treacherous on the roads down in western Tennessee, the Memphis area especially back in January of 94. But look at where the cold is focused there on that right-hand graphic in January 94, that purple shading. Order, on the order of 10 to 14 degrees Fahrenheit below normal, stretching from eastern North Dakota, uh, eastern South Dakota, Minnesota, northern Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan, parts of Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York State, on up into New England, and that green shading there on the right for January 94, um, Mid-Atlantic was running 4 to 8 degrees Fahrenheit below normal, all the way down to the deep south, parts of Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi. So um, generally, cold October, 93, near average in November, and then we had a cold December across the eastern U.S., and then a frigid January. Moving ahead now to 1997, October 97 on the left, showing temperature departures Slightly below normal across the eastern U.S., denoted by the blue coloring, on the order of 2 to 4 degrees Fahrenheit below normal in the Mid-Atlantic, the Tennessee River Valley, the Ohio Valley, right on down into the Deep South. And also was below normal across the western U.S. in October of 97. California, Nevada, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, and Colorado. Graphic on the right, that cold air continued into November of 97 for the eastern U.S., um, with the coldest pockets generally from the Appalachian Mountains down, stretching down into eastern Tennessee, the Asheville, North Carolina area, running 4 to 8 degrees Fahrenheit below normal, on into northern Georgia. Looking at December 97 on the left, showing slightly below normal temperatures across the mid-Atlantic, down to the southeastern U.S., to the Gulf Coast, and generally warmer than normal now in December 97, over the upper Midwest, up in the Northern Plains. You know, North Dakota, uh, Northern Minnesota running anywhere from eight to 12 degrees Fahrenheit above normal in December of 97. Looking at the graphic on the right, that's January 1998. And look how things flipped and turned around again. How now in the Ohio Valley into up into New England, we're running well above normal including 4 to 6 degrees Fahrenheit above normal in the Mid-Atlantic, up through 
um, Nor- New England into Pennsylvania, New York State, Massachusetts into January 98. So overall, we had a cold October of 1997, a cold November 1997, a cold December 1997, and then things turned around across the eastern U.S. to be very mild in January of 98. Looking ahead now to October and November of 2001, October 2001 on the left showing that blue and green shading indicative of below normal temperatures across the deep south as well as parts of the mid-Atlantic states. Uh, slightly above normal across New England, and then also above normal across California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, and New Mexico. Slightly cooler than normal across the northern tier of the United States to the Pacific Northwest. November 2001 on the right. Well, what a difference there in the upper Midwest in uh, November of 2001. Uh, 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit above normal generally stretching from the eastern Dakotas, eastern Nebraska, Iowa, into northern Illinois and Wisconsin. And then very mild across the eastern U.S. as a whole, even outside of that uh, warmest anomaly there in the upper Midwest, running anywhere from 4 to 6 degrees Fahrenheit above normal for a large chunk of the eastern U.S. December of 2001, the warmth continued across the eastern U.S., the warmth continued across New England, across the upper Midwest, Uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Iowa, Missouri, all the way across the eastern seaboard, Virginia, the Carolinas. It was a very mild December, month of December of 2001. And then to the right, January of 2002, where's winter? If you live in the upper Midwest, into the um, northern plains, it's New England. You were really wondering, where is winter this year? So in summary, this particular year, we had a cold October in the east. Warm November, uh, warm December and January, so a very mild winter overall. Looking at October and November of 2005, generally showing milder than normal temperatures on the order of 1 to 3 degrees Fahrenheit above normal in October of 2005 across the Mid-Atlantic into New England, um, and then 2 to 4 degrees Fahrenheit above normal across the Upper Plains states uh, with slightly below normal temperatures across the Deep South as well as California. Graphic on the right shows November of 2005. This was a very mild month with the exception of the Pacific Northwest in November of 2005. Look at that orange shading from coast to coast, um, generally on the order of 3 to 5 degree Fahrenheit above normal temperature anomalies in that particular month. December 2005, wow, what happened in the east? Mild October, mild November, and then boom, December 2005 on the left. Look at the blue and green shading. Uh, indicative that green shading again of 4 to 8 degree Fahrenheit below normal temperature departures anywhere from Iowa across interstate 80 cities, uh, northern Illinois, in Indiana, Ohio, into Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, all the way down into the deep south, northern Florida, Georgia, Alabama, running 4 to 6 degrees Fahrenheit below normal in December 2005. But then we go to the right, look at that, January of 2006 on the right. All that anomalously cold air has now been replaced by anomalously warm temperatures uh, for a large chunk of the upper Midwest down to the Ohio River. We're talking about temperatures in the order of 12 to 15 degrees, sometimes 16 degrees Fahrenheit above normal um, in places that normally don't experience that kind of mild conditions in January. Looking at October and November 2009, uh, October on the left, it was a very cold month across a lot, of, a large part of the United States there, October 2009. And even on the eastern seaboard there, we're looking at temperatures in the order of 2 to 4 degrees Fahrenheit below normal in October 2009. But the purple shading there uh, out in Wyoming, eastern Colorado, western Nebraska, and western South Dakota, you're looking at temperatures in the order of 4 to up to 9 degrees Fahrenheit below normal in that particular month, October 2009 on the left. And then in November 2009, it turned mild. It turned mild for a large chunk of the United States. Upper Plains, Midwest, running 4 to 8, up to 9 degrees Fahrenheit above normal up in North Dakota. And then the eastern seaboard is also mild, uh, any running anywhere from 2 to 4 degrees Fahrenheit above normal in Virginia, North Carolina, And then you go further north, up Interstate 95 to New England, and things got even toastier on the order of 
4 to 6 degrees Fahrenheit above normal up in New England. And then taking a look at December 2009 on the left and January 2010 on the right. Um, very cold December in 2009. You can see all the green and the purple and the blue shading pretty much coast to coast across the United States, which you really don't get um, a completely coast to coast type of temperature anomaly like this on the left, because usually um, you have an upper level ridge either in the west or east and a corresponding trough. You have a ridge trough couplet is what we call it. So under the ridge, you typically get anomalously warm temps, and then in the trough, you get anomalously colder temperatures. But look at that graphic on the left for December 2009, parts of Montana in the Dakotas and Nebraska, 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit below normal in the purple shading. Meanwhile, the mid-Atlantic to New England on the order of uh, 4 to 6 degrees Fahrenheit below normal. And then the graphic on the right shows January of 2010. Uh, that cold air continues from Iowa, Missouri, the Midwest, Illinois, stretching all the way down to the southeastern U.S., including Florida in January of 2010. Looking at 2013, October on the left and November 2013 on the right, fairly mild across the eastern U.S. in October of 2013 on the left, with the coldest air back west of the Rockies to the west coast. And then the graphic on the right, November 2013, Things kind of turned around where conditions got milder in the western U.S. and got colder across the eastern U.S. on the order of 2 to 4 degrees Fahrenheit below normal across the mid-Atlantic up through New England as well as the midwestern U.S. December 2013 on the left, um, we got the coldest air generally located up in the upper plains, upper Midwest, Minnesota in December 2013 where our temperatures were on the order of 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit below normal. Meanwhile, we have that orange shading stretching from Florida up the eastern seaboard there, Georgia, the Carolinas, and Virginia, where we had temperatures on the order of 2 to 4 degrees Fahrenheit above normal in December of 2013. Graphic on the right, what happened? Look at the east coast now. Uh, the cold air spread further southeast all the way to the east coast. And now that fairly mild December of 2013 has been replaced by a much colder January of 2014. And these type of things happen very commonly in the winter season in the United States. One month can be mild and you ask yourself, where's winter? And then the next month you're shivering on you just get these strong northwesterly, persistent northwesterly winds or northerly winds that continually to resupply the cold air from eastern Canada into the upper Midwest and the East Coast. Looking at 2017, October 2017 on the left, showing New England was very warm in October 2017 on the orders of 5 to 10 degrees Fahrenheit above normal for Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, down to New York City, New York State, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. And then the graphic on the right shows a slight cool down there in November of 2017 on the right uh, from New England, those same areas that were above normal in October are now slightly below normal in November. And you'll notice that graphic on the right for November 2017, very warm, anomalously warmer than normal across the Four Corners region in the southwestern U.S. December 2017 on the left versus January 2018 on the right. And December 2017 was um, on the order of 2 to 4 degrees Fahrenheit below normal, uh, generally south of Interstate 80 across the eastern U.S. Um, but generally, if you go north of Interstate 80, into New England, um, the parts of Michigan, uh, Wisconsin. That's where the green shading is there on the left in December 2017, where the temperatures were uh, much cooler than normal on the order of four to eight degrees Fahrenheit below normal. Graphic on the right shows January of 2018. Look at the Western US on that graphic on the right, running five to 10 degrees Fahrenheit above normal in places like Nevada, Southern California, uh, Arizona, parts of Utah. But look at the green shading there on the east coast on the right, generally on the range of 4 to 8 degrees Fahrenheit below normal, all the way down the Gulf Coast. It was a colder than normal January in 2018. And I remember how frigid the air was the first six to seven days of January 2018 across southeastern Virginia. You know, that, it was a very frigid beginning of the new year on January 1st. And then, then a coastal storm formed and dumped a lot of snow, a swath of heavy snow up the eastern East Coast uh, due to an intense bomb cyclone. So 
taking a look at all these winters, okay, looking at the fall, the fall months of October, November, looking at the temperature departures, then looking at the subsequent winter, hard of winter months, December, January, I wanted to see if there was any kind of direct correlation. This is the results, all right? This is what we have for results. 1981, and by the way, before I explain this, before I get into it, uh, the negative symbol there indicates, uh, denotes a colder than normal temperature pattern. A plus symbol is a, denotes a warmer than normal temperature pattern. And the AVG is short for average temperatures, okay? So in general, I kind of summed it up, um, but in general, um, it goes in order of October, Salitis, November, Salitis, December, Salitis, and then January will be the last value last sign, whether it was warmer or colder. So 1981, we had a cold October, we had a cold November, we had a cold December, and we had a cold January. So generally, the colder fall months led into a colder heart of winter months in December and January. 1984, we had a warmer October across the eastern U.S., then we had a colder than normal um, November, and then things flip back to warmer than normal in December, and then colder than normal in January. So it was kind of like above normal, below normal, above normal, below normal in the winter of 1984-85. 1989, October, November were average. And then December turned colder, below normal, and then we had a warmer than normal January in uh, 1990. 1993, 94 winter season, below normal October, an average Average uh, November for the east eastern U.S., then colder than normal in December and January. 1997, colder than normal October, November, and December, but then kind of turning around there, warming up in January, doing a January thaw in January of 98. The year 2001, October, November, uh, October below normal, November above, and then December, January, both above. 2005, October and November were warmer than normal. We had below normal December and then a above normal January of 2006. 2009, 10 winter season, a below normal October across the east, above normal November, and then below normal, colder than normal December and January in, as we worked our way from 2009 into tw early 2010. 2013, 14 winter season, October of 2013 average, then November went colder than normal. Um, December of 2013 was above normal, a mild December, followed by a colder than normal January of 2014. And then finally, we looked at the 2017-18 winter season, where it was above normal in October, below normal November, below normal December, below normal January. Okay, so this was the results of the research I conducted, randomly picking these winter seasons and trying to determine, does fall predict the winter? Right. So my final thought on this research, data suggests there is no specific, I could not find a specific correlation between the fall season temperature anomalies and the subsequent winter season temperature anomalies or departures from normal. I strictly was looking at temperatures alone. I didn't look at any of the other teleconnections or the why behind the what. I just look strictly at temperatures. And, and this kind of ties in with, you know, the belief of the law of equilibrium of nature. You know, you may have a warmer period, right? And that eventually is going to balance out with colder than normal weather. All right. It's got to, nature is always trying to establish itself in a sense of equilibrium. So colder periods will replace, will ultimately be replaced by milder periods. Milder periods or stretches of un, above normal temperatures will eventually be replaced by colder than normal temperature departures. Uh, it's just a matter of figuring out the temporal, right? The temporal relationship. So what I looked at with my 10 winters, four fall season temperature departures, and those fall season months again I looked at were October, November. They matched up with the winter season temperature departures, four of them. The years 1981, 84, 89, and 93. So in that case, the four of the ten I looked at uh, would match up with more of a direct correlation. Warm falls, 
warm winters, cold fall, cold winter. But six of these fall seasons, the temperature departures, they did not match up with the winter season temperature departures, okay? Uh, 1997, 2001, 2005, 2009, 2013 to 2017, those particular six fall season temperature departures did not directly correlate or the winter months didn't ex exactly correlate or match what happened in the fall. So these non-correlated results, uh, what I'm thinking, they may be due to delayed temporal relationship. So what do I mean by that? Kind of like what I was just explaining, warmer periods eventually are going to be replaced by colder periods. Okay. Um, and so if you have a warm fall one particular year, at some point down the line, there's going to be a colder than normal period, whether that be winter or whether that be the following spring, the following summer. And that's really the big trick in determining when that equilibrium or that balance is going to be reestablished. So the coupling between the atmosphere and the temperature pattern, okay, the energy transfers, is delayed due to, uh, to the following winter season maybe or a different season in the future. Now, further research obviously may yield a more substantial or fruitful relationship between the seasons. But again, this is the kind of stuff that really interests me. You know, I think about a lot um, in general, you know, what's causing this anomalously cold period? Uh, what's causing this anomalously warm period? At what point is equilibrium achieved um, where the law of averages comes into play. And so I find this real interesting. Although this research didn't find a direct correlation between fall and the winter season, that particular immediately, that immediate winter season, um, this remains very interesting topic in my mind. So I really hope you enjoyed taking a look at this topic tonight with us. Um, and, and just, again, you know, it comes down to always having that curious mindset in a scientific field and, and trying to figure out if there's any relationships, any clues that have not been uncovered yet to figure out relationships in the weather. Um, you know, I, I go back to the law of equilibrium as well. When we talk about periods of uh, more stormy, more stormy periods and calmer, benign weather periods. Um, you know, I always feel like when we have a nice stretch of weather, that eventually we're going to get we're going we're gonna to pay get paid back with a much higher frequency of storm activity. Um, you know it can't stay nice forever. Areas in the atmosphere where air rises have to balance out with areas in the atmosphere where the air sinks. So rising air and sinking air must eventually equal out over specific locations in in a form of equilibrium. That's all I've got tonight, everybody. Hope you're enjoying the videos on the Spot on Weather YouTube channel. Um, you know, from the weekly teleconnection discussions, I find that real intriguing, you know, the seasonal forecasting aspects, and then some of these other interesting research topics from La Nina to QBO winners um, to, you know, the relationships uh, between different teleconnections and temperature patterns and snowfall. I've, I've seen comments and feedback on some of the videos recently talking about, hey, you know, could you... You know, show a relationship between snow in the United States, the, you know, above versus below normal snowfall in the U.S. during La Nina winters. That's a great, great, that's actually a great idea. And, um, you know, that's something I definitely may take a look at here in the near future. And so that wraps it up, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing to this channel. Uh, I hope the curiosity and the information I find is valuable and gets you also thinking in that scientific mindset as to why things occur in our atmosphere. All right, take care, everybody. And until next time, I, by the way, don't forget to set your clocks back tonight. Before I go, I'll definitely put that reminder out uh, as we move back to standard time. Uh, everybody falls back tonight, one hour. So don't forget to do that um, tonight. All right, thank you again so much for listening and uh, enjoying this atmospheric journey coming along uh, this ride with me uh, on this atmosphere journey and the discovery of the atmosphere and trying to decipher those clues. Um, and that's it. I wish everybody well and uh, best wishes. Take care and God bless.